Good afternoon and welcome back to the workbench. So today I have my T61 laptop. Again, this is the one I previously upgraded the screen in, and today I'm going to upgrade the CPU as well as replace the uh, fan because the original fan is uh, starting to get rather noisy and sometimes doesn't work properly. And possibly it just needs to be relubricated and cleaned and stuff like that, but I won't know until I get it out, so I might as well swap it out for a new one and uh, just see if I can fix the other one later. But anyway, so I've got a, uh, I think a T7100 in this thing. I'll just see if I can actually bring that up. So if we look here in the uh, BIOS, I don't know if you can see this, but we've got a uh, Core 2 Duo T T7100 in here, which is I think 1.8 gigahertz, and the one I bought was a uh, T7800, which is uh, 2.6 gigahertz, and has a higher cache, I think twice as much as this one, so it should be a fairly decent upgrade, which is the uh, highest official supported CPU. Um, I didn't really want to go for an unofficial one um, and have to change the BIOS and everything like that. You can do it, but supposedly the thermal sensor then doesn't work and um, doesn't support that. The BIOS basically just disables the thermal sensing, so I wasn't really sure I wanted to do that, so I figured I'd just get the highest official supported one, which is a T7800. Um, and yeah, like I said, got a new fan just in case uh, the old one is unfixable. And uh, the CPU I bought from eBay, um, it's second hand. Um, and there is something to note about this, it's actually got a uh, little chip on one of the corners of the die, which is unfortunately what happens with some of these unprotected CPUs that don't have a heat spreader on top. That's kind of why they put heat spreaders on top, part of the reason anyway. Um, because people could crack the die on these quite easily. Um, but hopefully the... Um, thing still works. Uh, it is a very small chip so it may not have actually extended into the circuitry and may not actually be damaged but again I, I, I don't know. I'll have to test it and just see what happens and then I'll know if I need to go to eBay and try and get a refund. Um, unfortunately I couldn't find any of these locally so I might have had to get one from China but there you go. Um, it also came with some really cheap looking thermal paste. Um, v King. Keyin LED CPU cooler. I'm not sure if this is designed for cooling LEDs or CPUs or what, but I'm not going to use it. Um, I'm using this uh, Z9. Um, you can also use Arctic Silver, of course, all that kind of stuff, but nowadays they're all pretty much exactly the same. The all performances within, within like 2% of each other or something, so who cares? It doesn't really matter what you use these days, as long as you just use something decent and not probably this, because God knows what this is made of. Um, and then again, to be honest, this is probably just as good as all the rest now, so who cares? I don't know. Whatever. Um, now one thing worthy of note is that this one is the Intel GPU, so the integrated Intel GPU in the chipset. Um, the ones that have the NVIDIA GPU uh, do need a thermal pad for the heat heat sink instead of thermal paste. Um, in my case, uh, it's fine. I can get away with just using paste because all you need is the heat sink on the Northbridge and the CPU, and both of those use paste. Um, if you do have a different model of this, though, be aware you may need to get a thermal pad instead of paste because the paste will not be thick enough to bridge the distance that the pad would, and um, you have to just look at that and uh, determine which one you need. So before you do that, before you change the CPU or anything, good idea to check um, which one you actually have and make sure, because you have to pull the heatsink off. The heatsink does the GPU and the CPU and Northbridge and everything, so you know if, you, if you're doing something with any of them, um, you have to take the whole heatsink out and you'll need to re refresh the paste or pad or whatever on all the three components if you have the uh, discrete GPU. But anyway, um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, nothing much else to say about this, so I'll just uh, get onto it and um, hopefully this uh, CPU does actually still work. And if it doesn't, well, hopefully I can get a refund. Okay, so first of all you want to switch the laptop off, close the lid and take the battery out. And then just put that aside. And now I've got to take out some screws. These five here, this uh, little one there, one, two, three, four, five, and then the two in these corners, and for the speakers and grill thing. And so if you're just taking the keyboard out, you can just do these five along here. But we also need to take off the uh, surround part that has the speakers in it. The 
this one's a bit hard because it's got the uh, go straight to the keyboard and that kind of flexes when you try to unscrew it. But anyway. Now I believe all these three screws, three, I mean seven screws, are the same length, so shouldn't be too much of an issue. Let's see how they all come out. Yep. So those, uh, those are all the same length, so that's fine. Um, this one just hasn't come off. I'd have to grab it with tweezers or something. Let's see. Oh no. There we go. Fingernail works. Alright. So. Now we turn over the other way. Lift the lid up. And then we want to take uh, this front part off with the touchpad and everything. So now let's see. has uh, some little... Oh, I should take out this card actually. I can pull the uh, sides of this up. Be careful though that you don't uh, tear the cables underneath, so you have to take this off, it slides backwards a little bit here, and then we have to disconnect this cable here. So just uh, take this one off, and then you can take the palm rest and thing assembly off. So it gets us into here, and now we have to take off the keyboard. Just lift up, and then there's another cable under here. Which again, this one has a little tab though, so you can just pull that, and then we can take the keyboard out. There's a little uh, tab on there you can grab and pull, or you can pull on this side bit. Um, anyway. So obviously there's the CPU fan there, there's the uh, CPU under here, and this is the GPU in Northbridge. Um, if you have the uh, GPU it'll be under there, if not then don't worry about it. Okay, we have to take off these two screws here, above the uh, little plate above the fan. This is where you want to make sure you don't get the screws mixed up. So I'm just going to keep those. Now, can we take this off yet? No. We have to take this bit off. Okay, so we can lift this up. Just pull it like that. And then on the side, there's another screw here. These three all seem to be the same, so that's fine. And we just want to. Uh, this one off, there we go, and then this just uh, pops out of there. Now this is very bendy so don't snap it in half. Huh. 
Interestingly, I see that uh, that wire there has been pinched under that. But I didn't do that. That must have come from the factory. Anyway, now... So now I should take this speaker out. It's got this dust on it. You can dust that off with something afterwards. Um. Dust in here making me sneeze. Anyway, be careful not to damage the speaker, it's just there. Um, quite small, if you poke something through it, you'll wreck it. So, anyway, undo the screws holding it in. And obviously, if we're uh, Taking off all the speakers, you'd have to do this one as well. But we're not, so it's irrelevant. So that uh, just disconnects like that. Now there's some uh, sellotape on top of this, holding these wires there, so I have to pull that off. These uh, cables here. Get those free. And then we must remove this plate as well. So that's another three screws. And again, these screws are all the same. So that's nice. Careful you don't damage these wires. Now, now I believe uh, these wires need to be disconnected. I think this is the uh, cable for the modem. Um, yeah, the dial-up modem in here, so, that's, uh, well, actually, I don't need to do that. Might be able to get away with just taking that off, and then just lifting these wires like that, possibly. But we could, uh, take them off anyway. Um, let's see, that's a bit tricky. I might try pliers for that. There we go. Get that out of the way, that's good. And we got the speaker, you can take that out of the way. Sit that over there. That's good. And then these uh, these antenna cables need to come off from this clip, um, because that clip's under there. So we can disconnect them from the card. Or you can take the card out completely. Given that these uh, connectors here are very small and are easy to break, um, and repeat repetitive replugging of them is not very good, um, it might be better to just 
Maybe I can just pull the wires out from under here. Slide them out. Just, um... Sorry. Let's uh, forget where the camera is. Okay, those have come free from there, so that's probably alright. So I'm just going to have those there. I'm not going to actually um, unplug them from the card. Then we need to undo this little clip as well. Just again, another one of these things, but all these screws are the same, so it doesn't really matter. And now... Now we just need to undo the uh, four screws there around the CPU. And the uh, whole thing should just lift out and come out. Apparently. So let's do that. These are on springs, so it doesn't really matter. Um, you're not going to lose them. This one's kind of springy. Yeah, just uh, undo them until they're all completely loose. Now the whole thing should just lift straight up, which it does. And we've still got the fan wire here, so I need to uh, disconnect that. Let's see. That looks a bit tricky. Um. the best way to do that without damaging the connector fingernails maybe oh yeah that works and now we can uh, lift that out and that just comes straight out and the screws fall out I take back what I said about the screws Yeah, so there we go. So there's the uh, north bridge, I believe. There's the CPU. Um, there's the heatsink assembly. We've got the uh, old paste, so I'll have to clean all that off. But there we go. Um, I think the uh, GPU would connect here um, if you had a GPU in it. Well, a discrete GPU anyway. Um, and there's the heatsink. You can uh, take that off and clean it if you need to. So let's see. Just looking at this fan though, um, pull this label off, there's just a just a metal thing there and there's nothing on this side so I don't know how uh, taking that off will necessarily work. Um, might not be able to repair it. Depends how they've put that on. So I may just replace that and uh, see what happens, because it does make some funny noises sometimes. And sometimes I get a, if it's a really cold day and I turn this thing on, I get an error saying that the fan doesn't work. It spins up, makes a grinding noise, then stops, and then the, there's a fan speed error, so yeah. Might just replace it, and uh, hopefully, hopefully the replacement one is actually decent. So to take the CPU out, we just need to get a flat blade screwdriver, put it in this little screw, turn it to the left like this until the uh, slot clicks over like that, and then we should just be able to lift the CPU out. So that uh, that's fine. And then we got the new one.
paying attention to the uh, this one's already been cleaned anyway so paying attention to this little gold gold triangle there that has to go to this corner here where these uh, two pins are missing on that side so it just goes in there like that and it should just uh, go in very easily you just hold it down and lock the socket back into place so now I just need to clean the uh, heatsink paste off this clean it off these so I'll just put this over the side here and we'll grab this, you can take a tissue paper get uh, get the sort of bulk of it off with the paper or whatever might have to uh, Sweep that up. But we do need to clean these. So that's taken the majority of it off. We need to uh, clean these up. I've got this uh, Arctic Clean stuff. I don't know if this is. Uh, still any good. I don't know if there's actually anything in there. There may be a little bit. Hmm. Or there may not be any. Okay, I'll have to resort to alcohol. I'll have to go and find some. Hang on. Okay, I've got some uh, isopropyl alcohol. This is a decent stuff here. And we'll uh, do the cleaning. Tip some onto a tissue. And I'll uh, you can see some of that came off. All looks good now. I'll fill this over till I get a fresh side and do the other part. So there we go. Again, more stuff came off. Well, I'm going to put some of this on anyway, as I can. Probably not necessary, but whatever. Incidentally, this uh, Arcticlean stuff is actually really good, but I've run out of the first set. And you can see barely any residue on there, so that's pretty much fine. Now we have to do the same thing to the north bridge. Um, but I'll be using these. Um, well, wow. hopefully I need to get the bulk of it off. I can just use another tissue again. Got most of it. Now put this in the alcohol. I can rub that round. And then
we go. I'm not going to worry about the stuff around the edges because cleaning that off would be a pain. And it doesn't really matter because it's got nothing to do with the actual thermal uh, connection. Yeah, so there we go. Those are both nice and clean. And I can apply the new thermal paste as soon as I get the uh, fan back in. So, yeah, let's just see. This is my new fan. I have no idea if this is any good. I don't even know if it'll fit. Now it's uh definitely spins freely, but uh it does have smaller fins. Or less fins I should say than this one, as you can see. Um so whether or not the performance is better or worse, I'm not sure. It may just run at a faster speed, I don't know. Um, the other thing worth noting is the uh, difference in size. So yeah, um, the shape, I mean, this is just a flat thing all around and this has a beveled edge, so whether this will even fit in here, I don't know. I might have to uh, muck around with that and see. The fan seems to be held on by these little copper tabs from the heatsink, so I guess you have to just bend those up or whatever and then slide the uh, fan out. I mean, it's definitely the uh, same shape and everything, but... Yeah. I don't know if it'll actually fit in the hole. And I'm going to have to break this... Uh, foam seal which is used to seal the airflow so I don't know if I I'm not sure if I actually want to do this or not because this fan it does work when it's warm um, actually I don't think I will replace the fan today um, I would have to tear all this uh, tape off and it looks like it's tearing there and I'd have to replace this foam I think so what I might do is I might uh, I mean this this fan still does work well enough um, like I said it only sort of really doesn't work properly on cold days um, but other than that it does seem to be okay so um, I might just leave that in there for now and I might try replacing it later um, when I get some more get some new tape for this I'll get some new tape and I'll get some new foam tape um, and then I'll do try replacing it later. I mean, we don't even know if the CPU works, so I suppose it's not worth going to too much trouble right now. Um, so I'll just uh, put this back in as it is, because it's still good enough. And we'll see what happens. We'll see if the CPU actually works, and if it does, then... Yeah, I'll uh, order the uh, the tape um, and uh, do that later or something. Yeah, that's a better idea, I think. So, let's just go straight on to putting the new paste in. So, I'm just going to put this uh, Z9. Um, let's put a blob of this one here. And we'll put one on here. That should do. I might spread that out a little bit. But it's probably not really necessary. I mean, stuff will all squeeze out once I put the heatsink on anyway, so it's not a big deal. Uh, 
That should be good enough. And we can shove the heatsink back in. And then obviously the uh, replacement procedure is just the reverse of the uh, deinstallation. So we just need to uh, put these four screws in. Now tighten them a little bit. In each corner. Don't tighten one corner fully at once and then uh, the other ones because that's uh, also a good way to crack the CPU. You just want to uh, tighten them sort of opposite. This one's a bit The uh, springs apply most of the pressure anyway. We just have to put the uh, everything back. So let's plug the fan back in. Slide the uh, antenna wires back under this little thing here. And then this time, be careful not to get that pinched under there like it was before. I don't know if it was like that from the factory, but I've never actually taken this heatsink off before, so I'm not sure what the deal is with that. No, I think we just put this one back. Get this back in. So the speaker goes over there, and then this gets routed under here and up through there. Under like that, um, and this uh, speaker wire also goes a similar way. go above that. That might actually go over the top. Yes, I think that goes like this. And then this one goes here. So let's just
That'll just go like that. I'm just going to brush the dust off from this. It's not really necessary. Do the other one as well. Alright, now these cables go underneath here. And this holds them down, this plugs back in there. That all looks good. And then I think we uh the speaker back on here. Let's make sure that these uh, cables all go in the uh, channel there so they're not sitting up on here to get squashed by the keyboard or anything like that. Let's make sure they're all down below the level of anything that might pinch them or squash them or anything put this back in and actually I can probably uh, well can I test it yet? No I can't, I have to put the keyboard back in to test it don't I? Yes, I don't really see why it shouldn't work at this point, assuming that CPU is fine so might as well just put the whole thing back together. Let's see. That does have to... actually line up. Yeah, that makes sense. That all seems alright there. Now we take one screw, goes here. And then we got the two that go here. So now I have to put this back in. It's quite simple to reattach this. Oh, my camera's just about to run out of time. Hang on a second. Okay, so let's put that in there. Just gonna get a torch here. Make sure you actually line these up. There we 
we go. Alright, that looks good. Now we can chuck this on. Again, making sure you uh, align the connector properly before you go pushing it down. I think uh, yes, that slides on from the front there. And it should just clip on. Okay, that all looks pretty good. So I'm not going to put the screws in on the bottom just yet because I don't want to see if it actually works first. Now I think my battery is like 5% left or something so I will have to plug this in to the adapter. Let's just see if it actually goes. Ah, it does start. Look at that. Let's see if I can get into the BIOS. Oh, hang on. There we go. T7800. Well, that's good. So it actually does uh, seem to function to some extent. Whether or not it uh, works perfectly, I don't know. But hey, it boots up. So CPU is uh, definitely working. Um, great. See if it actually boot the operating system. Righty ho then. Well, that uh, does appear to be just fine, doesn't it? So uh, it's been going for a while, and uh, Solitaire plays perfectly fine, so it must be working. Um, anyway, so I've been running a backup here, um, which has been uh, using the CPU quite a bit for compression and that. So it uh, seems to be working fine. The uh, fan still makes a horrible wobbly noise. Um, I can see that I didn't bother putting the new one in because I think it would be too much hassle at the moment. Um, I need to get some more. Um, conductive tape and uh, tape um, foam tape for the uh, thing hey there we go, you can hear the fan possibly um, see, if you can, see if you can actually hear this and it's probably not that bad um, it sort of warmed up a bit and now it's not so terrible but um, yeah, it's not uh, that great but uh, the thing seems to be working, um, temperatures are all fine, we've got uh, currently 35, it was up to 45 before when we were running the backup. Um, but yeah, everything seems okay, so I guess that chip in the side of the chip um, wasn't too much of a problem. Obviously it was small enough that it didn't extend into the circuitry, so hopefully everything seems okay. Um, I didn't notice any issues in the boot log or anything like that, so... Um, nothing to suggest that there was any hardware problem. Um, and there was a small performance increase, but, you know, it's not huge, as you'd expect. Um, but hey, it's better than nothing, and uh, the thing does work, and that's how you upgrade the uh, CPU in your laptop. And I initially was going to replace the fan, and I thought, well, if I'm in there replacing the fan, I'll upgrade the CPU as well. Um, as it turned out, I didn't bother replacing the fan, because, like I said, I don't have the, uh, the tape and stuff required to do that. Um, I thought it would be easy to peel the old tape off and reuse it, but when I tried that it started to tear and it looked like it would be a real pain, so um, I'll have to buy some new tape and all that and uh, do it properly some other time when the fan completely dies, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's the only problem with laptops. Uh, getting brand new uh, authentic fans for them can be a problem sometimes, so I don't know if this one's any good. Um, like I said, it has less fins and the shape is a little bit different, but 
I mean, eh, it'll probably work if I have to use it, but it's not ideal. It would be good to get a uh, brand new official one, but um, given how old this thing is, I don't think that's going to be possible. So I'll either have to live with the noise or whatever, and or we'll use this thing. But apart from that, there we go. That's how you replace the uh, replace the heatsink, fan, the CPU assembly, all that stuff. Um, and one of these T61s and the other models that this is uh, very similar to. Um, so it's not very hard at all, you just need a screwdriver uh, basically and uh, no special tools required. Like I said though, if you do have one of these models with the NVIDIA um, GPU in it, or the, I think maybe some other models similar to this have a Radeon, but even in any case, if you do have a discrete GPU, you will need a thermal pad, not just paste. Um, but yeah, it's pretty easy. Um, there is a guide I'll link in on the ThinkPads forum, um, which basically details how to do that, or you can download the uh, maintenance manual and um, the official maintenance manual. It'll show you how to do it. But the guide is easier because it has uh, photos and you know everything's pretty simple. Um, but yeah, that's nice. So hopefully that was useful to someone. And uh, see you next time.